going to put on my uh, telephone man's hat this time because my home phone has gone noisy and it's also affecting my internet because I'm on DSL. I got a lot of noise on the line. Let's see what's causing the problem and see if I can solve it. That phone is making one heck of a racket today. So today I'm going to put on my telephone man's hat because that's what I do for a living but it's my day off and my home phone is noisy and I know most everybody is on fiber optic here I'm not I'm still on copper and I'm on copper only for a couple of reasons I have fiber in my house but I've never hooked it up uh, I spliced it through a couple of years ago but I've never switched over and one of the reasons I stay on copper I'll explain uh, well one of the big reasons is because I still have in my house I have a collection of old rotary phones which will not work on the fiber optic network phones such as this old beast this old rotary phone which goes back to the 1950s i'm covering up my phone number by the way it's written on the the, the dial there um it, this goes back to i don't know the 1950s i guess this was in my my mother and father-in-law's house and when the house was taken down i took the phone out i've got a couple like this i've actually got about four or five rotary phones throughout the house that I still use on a regular basis. I love the sound of the old ring. You can hear this thing out at the street when it rings. Well, that won't work on fiber optic. It'll actually still work to receive phone calls, but uh, you can't dial out because the, the ONTs don't support pulse dialing. I also have one of these old classic security systems in my house, which dials out on a copper phone line and even though technically these will dial out on a fiber optic line the, the, the problem with fiber optics it's great but for home phone service one of the benefits of having one of these panels is that if someone tampers with the phone line the alarm is going to go off it's going to go in an audible siren so when it's armed if someone cuts the phone line the siren goes off when you're fed with fiber optic, how that, well, first of all, I'll explain how that operates. The alarm panel that's hidden in a closet monitors the phone line voltage. There's normally around 52 volts DC, 48 to 52 volts DC on a phone line. And if that voltage drops, then the alarm panel will go into a trouble state if it's not armed and start beeping. I know it says trouble here just because the clock isn't set on it. Um, but um, if the alarm is armed, it'll go into a local alarm, set off the siren, scare away the bad guys that are going to cut the phone line so they can do a break-in, and alert the neighbors that something's going on. When you're fed with fiber optic, that doesn't happen because the voltage that is generated is generated by the ONT. And even if the fiber is cut, service is down, but the ONT is still providing the voltage the alarm system is never made aware that there's a fault, that there's been tampering with the line. That's reason number two. Reason number three though, probably the most important of them all, is that one right there. If you dial 911 from your home phone, they know the physical address. Now this works with, with fiber fed phones as well, but that's why I have a home phone. A lot of people say, say why do you have a home phone? Just live off yourself. And I'll tell you the reason why. When my dad was alive, he had a stroke. He wasn't able to speak and he was paralyzed on the left side of his body. He was able to get the phone and he was able to dial 911. He was still aware enough that there was a, that he was in real serious trouble. But he wasn't able to speak to the operator. The operator knew immediately that it was a medical emergency and because he had a home phone they knew exactly where he was now cell phones as good as they are they have gps on them now they know where you are the last time your phone pulled for a gps signal modern cell phones don't have a constant source of gps they don't leave the gps chips running all the time because it drains the battery when does a gps get pulled when you're using the phone, when you make a phone call 
it will seek the GPS signal as well as as other information like what the cell site is closest for example but it will check the GPS when you make a phone call and when you're using apps that require location services such as map apps and when you take a photo the rest of the time the GPS is dormant in your phone so if you haven't used your phone you've been out say you used your phone at the Starbucks or whatever but you haven't used the phone and you've gone home and now you're inside your house and all of a sudden you're having a heart attack and you need to dial 911 if your phone is not near a window where it can get a signal from the satellite when you make that call the only information that they've got as far as your location is the closest cell site which could be a couple blocks away they don't know your exact location unless the phone can see the sky and that can mean the difference between life and death if it takes an extra 10 or 15 minutes or longer to find you that can be a life-changing situation so I keep my good old phone here the main reason I've got it is in the event that I ever need to dial 911 for any reason they know exactly where I am now the first thing I need to determine is is the problem that's causing this noise a problem with the inside wiring or is it a problem in the outside wiring up in the RA up on the pole or in the outside cable to determine this I'm going to disconnect the inside wire and I'm going to connect my butt set which is basically an amplified speaker although the battery in here has been dead for years uh, this is actually my original butt set that I was assigned when I was hired and uh, I got a new one so I, I brought the old one home and I keep it as a spare but this was actually my original butt set that I got when I uh, was first hired by the phone company so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to open up the telephone DMARC box this is where the grounding is and inside here there will actually be the fiber that I installed which I've never used and I've got two lines in here I've got uh, my primary and my secondary line that is uh, feeding the house. I don't remember which one's which, but I think there's actually there's actually four because I used to have multiple lines in here back in the day. There should be a, all four pairs of this drop should be connected. But let's uh, take a listen, and I'm going to clip on to the wires. I think it's this one here. It's the primary line, and this one's the secondary line. I'm going to clip onto the wires and uh, take a listen and then what I'll do is I'll disconnect this is the inside wire going into the house I'll disconnect them and see if the static goes away if the static goes away then I know the problem is inside the house if the static continues then I have to look back at the outside plant and if that's the case I'll grab my keys and we'll go down to the local cross connect and we'll take a listen to it down there uh, sorry about that noise that's my heat pump running but uh, I put the wire on the battery is actually still good in this thing after all these years I can hear it's clear, but when I, you can hear the snapping and crackling. So if I just remove this here, if I just open this up, and the snapping and crackling goes away, which it has not, then I know the problem's in the line. So the problem is in the phone line. Now I have to go and, and uh, look up the facilities see what pairs that I should be on and uh, grab my keys and head down to the cross connect open it up and we'll test it there and see whether it's just a brad connection at one of the modules or whether there's a problem in the line I arrived at the cabinet and I got my information for my cable pairs so let's unlock the cabinet and take a look at what's inside here Try and do this one-handed. What a mess. The reason this is a mess is because uh, I started grooming this cabinet months ago when the lockdown first started. We were clearing out all the old DSL ports that were no longer needed for people that had been migrated over to fiber so I got to the point of pulling out jumpers and, and of course we all got back to work and uh, 
it got left. <laughs> so I'm looking for my, my assignment. I am on, I'm supposed to be on pair 276, although it might be on 268 because that's listed as a spare. But 276 is down here. So let me just clip on. Looks like there is a jumper right there. So that should be my line. Let's see if it's noisy. Sure enough, you can hear the DSL in there, but the line is noisy. You can hear it. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna actually disconnect the line and listen to the actual cable. I'm gonna disconnect the line going to my house and see if the noise goes away. That'll determine whether the fault is in the line or whether it's in one of the modules here not being terminated properly. Of course, I do that by just taking my spider probe and lifting the wires out. That's a dead jumper right there. See, pull those out and get rid of it. Um, a lot of these are dead because I, I cleared them off when I was grooming this thing, I cleared these all out, but they just never got pulled through. But we'll take a few of those out right now. Uh, 276 is by, and I'm gonna pull the jumper off here, and we're going to clip on directly to the wire and see whether the static is still there. So I've clipped on directly to the wire. As you can hear, no noise, no static. Therefore, what I've just discovered is that the problem is between this cabinet and my house. It could be it was just terminated incorrectly here, so we'll try re-terminating it here. If that doesn't fix it, I'm going to put it onto the spare pair and go to my house and see if the spare, because I used to have three working lines, I see if the spare is clear. Before I do that though, I'm gonna re-terminate it back where it came from and see whether the noise went away because sometimes it's just a connection right here on these modules that caused the noise. But as you can hear, the static is still there. So let's try that spare pair. I'll put it onto the spare pair and then go back to my house and listen to how it sounds there. So I've tied down to the spare line. I'm going to my house. We'll, we'll clip on and listen to it here and see how it sounds. It may have been changed before. Uh, or this one may be a good spare, but we'll find out if I don't have dial tone back at my house And I'll know it's been cut somewhere in the field or it's also bad, but we'll tie it down to this one This should be going to the blue white pair in the nid box in my house. So clipping onto the spare Sounding clear here Now just in case someone from work is watching This is being filmed on a Thursday, which is my day off. So when I tested the line, I've got nothing on this one so what that means is that somewhere up here up on the pole when that RA was replaced because I only had two working services at the time they only connected up the two lines which means that I'm gonna have to get my truck and go up the pole get my ladder up there go up the pole and switch it over something I'm certainly not gonna do on my day off but uh, we'll take care of that at some point. But what I'm gonna do for today is I'm gonna go back down to that cabinet and I'm gonna swap the two lines around because I do have two lines into the house. I have my voice line, which has got DSL, and I have a bonded digital loop, which does not have a dial tone on it. It's got a suppressed dial tone. I mean, you can, it has a dial tone for uh, identifying purposes only, but you can't dial out on it. It's a, it's a dead line. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna swap that good line with the bad line and remove the battery from the uh, port going into the port. Therefore, there won't be any voltage on the line and all that noise, which is caused by water that's gotten in somewhere, either in this splice or one of the ones further down the street, somewhere down there where the splice comes in. Water's gotten into a splice and that's what you hear, creating all that noise. So, I mean, once it dries up, it'll probably go away, but voltage is not necessary for a digital loop. All that's needed is the RF, which is carried on the pair. So if I disconnect battery, uh, sure, it'll make it more difficult for someone to identify the line, but then I don't anticipate that anybody's gonna be working on that line going to my house other than me. So uh, I'm gonna go up to the cabinet again, swap them around and uh, switch them here at the house. And that should solve my problems. So now all I need to do is just either switch these two wires around or these two, and I'll just do it on the I'll do it on the, the incoming side. This one becomes the bonded loop. Mm. 
much easier to do when you've got two hands to do this. But this goes in here. And that gate closes down like that. And then this one will go in on this side. And this will now become my primary line for my home phone. There, let's go in the house, and take a listen and see how the phone sounds. No noise, clear as a bell. I'm now going to go into my diagnostics through my technician access code <laughs> and I'm going to do a perform a DSL profile optimization. So what this will do is this is going to this is going to run a test on the port on the two ports and uh, see if we can get some more speed out of it now that I've removed the noise problem because uh, that one line that had a lot of noise on it, it would have, that would have been uh, port number one which is now going to be on port number two. Uh, but it's going to uh, So one one and three would have been the bad one 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 and five was the good line And I've just basically swapped them around, but I've removed the voltage from the one 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 five port So it's now just working on a an uncharged no DC on the loop um, The noise is crossing over to another line. That's what causes or not so much another line, but more likely to ground It's a splice that's gotten wet. So by removing that uh, voltage it should remove that that impulse noise from the loop and once this thing goes we should see an improvement in my speed now i know i'm going to get some jackass that's going to say oh i get this speed and i get that speed on fiber i have fiber right here in my closet right next to my gateway so i could bring fiber in here in about 15 minutes because it's connected I don't. I'm still on copper because of the reasons I explained before. I have legacy equipment. It's the same reason why I fixed up this Onkyo receiver and put it into service in my equipment closet because I have legacy equipment that I like to still use. Oh, it looks like my profile optimization has completed. So we'll just do a, a quick check here before I uh, close this one off. My speed will probably be a bit low right now because, uh, yeah, I'm only getting like 65. I should be getting 75. Um, what's going to happen is the line is going to optimize at night. I've, I've set up the profile optimization. So what it does is it monitors the uh, line conditions and it does a pro profile optimization in the middle of the night. So by tomorrow, my speed should be right back up to my 75 meg service, but it's looking good. I don't have any noise on the line now, and I'm getting pretty close to my rated speed, so we'll check it again tomorrow, but I think we're good at this point.